Welcome back to my channel, Deconstruct. Today I have a super exciting two-part series coming at you guys, and it is to create the Nike Tennis Girl outfit. If you haven't already seen Bella Hadid's full Tennis Girl outfit earlier this summer, it has been the hottest thing trending on Instagram as all girls are wearing little white mini skirts, and I wanted to be a part of it. Since all the Nike skirts in white are currently sold out of my size and people are just reselling them at a crazy price online. I thought this would be a great opportunity to create my own and today for part one we're going to be doing the Nike tennis skirt portion which looks like this. Super cute, all white. I actually used a real Nike Pro waistband for this and you'll see in the next few clips how I got this piece. Then has a shorts built into it so you can make it a functional piece and actually play tennis in it or you know what if you just want to lounge around in it that's cool too but yeah the results are super cute I am definitely going to be wearing this for the rest of summer I think it's just adorable and you just can't go wrong with a cute mini skirt I already have plans of making one in black so if you'd like to learn how to make this tennis skirt then please keep on watching so for this DIY, you'll want the following. I have a pair of extra, extra large Nike Pro men's leggings that we're gonna be reusing the waistband for. And I'm gonna do something else with the logo because this seems too good to waste. And we have some white polyester spandex fabric to make the skirt. So here you can actually see this is a test piece that I test pleated. And it seems to be holding pretty well so this tells me that this fabric is able to be heat set um, i did throw this in the wash through a cold cycle as well and the pleats are still visible this is proof of concept that i could heat set the fabric that i will be using so that's really exciting and it still is very flowy and drapey so it will look super cute as a skirt version so yeah i'll show you how to set up the pleats on a piece of paper and then we'll do the exact same thing to our fabric. To set up the pattern for our knife plates, I am marking down one inch increments and drawing lines across the page to create folding lines for the plates. So there you're gonna have pleats, hidden pleat, pleat, hidden pleat, pleat, hidden pleat, pleat. You get the idea. And basically what happens is you're gonna take the pleating line and you're gonna fold it so that it lines up with the next line right beside it. So let's just fold the first line. And taking that pleated line, you're gonna fold it over this way and line it up with the next pleat. So you will have a one inch width right here for your knife pleat. You'll be pressing this with an iron on your actual fabric and then just re repeating the same thing. So folding the furthest pleat line first it over and then just lining it up back and then there's your second pleat so you have one pleat here another knife pleat here and then you're just going to want to repeat that all the way across The entire piece of paper actually shrank in half because it's a one-to-one -one pleat so for every one pleat you're also hiding the same amount of material so when you're measuring out your skirt portion just double the final width of it there's like no weird calculation since i'll be using probably a 25 or 26 inch waistband i know exactly it'll be either 25 pleats or 26 pleats depending on which length i choose so we're going to do this to our fabric it's definitely going to be trickier with the fabric because fabric does move around i will be probably maybe basting or pinning everything down to make sure that 
the pleats flow perfectly straight all the way down the length of my material. Let's uh, get started with that. <laughs> the skirt consists of a large rectangular piece of fabric. Taking your waistband measurement to the closest inch, you'll want to double that for the width of your fabric. The length of the skirt will be around 13 to 14 inches. Feel free to change this as you want. And to set up the pleats on the fabric, you'll want to use a washable fabric marker to mark the fabric. I ended up placing my marks in the seam allowance portion of my skirt just in case it didn't wash out properly. I could cut off the marked areas at a later time. Just taking my time and marking it very well because I want to make sure that this skirt turns out really good. <laughs> There is nothing better than someone coming up to you and asking you where you got your shit and then you saying like you made it, but that means someone thought that could be store worthy, you know? Like, I love that. I think I actually have more pleats than I need for my waistband, but just in case I want to like have it lower on the hip because I haven't fully decided where I want the skirt to hit. I think preferably I would prefer high-waisted, but just keeping my options open, um, which is always good. It's always good to have extra fabric versus less fabric because you can't take things back when sewing. So yeah. Using the same folding technique as shown earlier, I set up my one inch knife pleats along the fabric, making sure to pin and secure each and every pleat before moving on to the next. Finally have pleated the whole entire length of this This is definitely more than 25 pleats, but better to have extra in case I want to make it wider and now I'm gonna spend a Long time pressing it in order to heat set the fabric You need to use a lot of heat and a lot of steam Set your iron steam setting to the max and make sure it's on the hottest fabric setting for mine, I set it to wool, even though there is a polyester setting that you can see on the dial. Taking your iron, you will want to press it onto your fabric and hold it for 10 to 15 seconds. Making sure not to drag the iron, but to only lift and press down along every plate. Be careful to let the fabric cool and set completely before moving on to the next steps. So my fabric is fully pleated. I'm just letting it settle back down. I did put in pins on one of the sides back in again to hold the pleats together so when I sew in the fixing stitches on each of the pleats um, those are ready set up for me so this is probably the most time consuming portion of the whole entire DIY is just folding these pleats setting them and hoping that they hold <laughs> now that the pleats have all set you'll want to secure each pleat to secure each pleat, you will be sewing on the front side along the edge of each individual pleat about an inch down the length of the skirt. Repeat on all pleats. For the shorts, which is completely optional for this tutorial, I used a pattern that I created from tracing an old pair of leggings. With the two leg pieces cut out, I used a serger to close up the front and back seams of the shorts. You can definitely just do this with a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. And then lying the fabric flat, grab the middle points of each side of the shorts and pull it apart until the front and back seams align. Sew up the bottom seam here to create the leg holes. Finish up the raw edges of the legs with a folded hem and a zigzag stitch. Here are the short portion that I made. I'm gonna try them on really quick to make sure they fit. This is very see-through. I'm just gonna pull my shirt down. <laughs> Fit really well. Um, I also have the skirt portion and we can kind of see how it look. See all the pleats are kind of set in now. You can't see my underwear anymore, which is great. The plan is to have the skirt probably around here. 
it looks pretty cute. I'm excited. This is working out well. I just hope the pleats stay. And yeah, so we just have to add the elastic band to this. For the waistband, you will want to remove it from the leggings by seam ripping the stitches out. Put on a YouTube video and take your time to make sure the waistband is preserved to the best of your abilities. With all the elements of the skirt completed, you'll want to adjust the Nike waistband to size, with half an inch seam allowance on either end. Sew the waistband together and secure it with a zigzag stitch across the seam. Optional to also sew down the flaps as well for a neater finish. Finally, you'll want to close up the side of the skirt by sewing together the open side, making sure that the pleats are lined up perfectly so it looks like one continuous piece. To attach the pleated portion to the waistband, you'll want to line up the side seam of the skirt with the side seam of the elastic. From there, you will want to evenly distribute the elastic with the opening of the skirt for equal tension around the waist. This is easily done by lining up the midpoints on the elastic waistband to midpoints on the skirt opening. Sew everything together with a zigzag stitch. Here is a quick try on of the skirt without the shorts attached. As you can see, the skirt is a bit transparent and you can see my underlying tank top underneath. The overall fit is quite nice and the pleats are looking great. The skirt did sit a bit lower on my waist at this point, so I ended up taking it in just a smidge so that it would sit higher on my waist. And I did this before I attached the shorts to the waistband. I actually ended up uh, taking in the side just a little bit right here and I just did it like a fold like that and just sewed it right back onto the seam. And there's this like one extra like pleat length in there, but because it's so pleated, it kind of hides everything really, really nicely. Um, so now deciding which side is the front and which side is the back, we're going to add in the shorts. Moving to the shorts, I first measured and trimmed down the shorts to accommodate for the one and a half inch height of the waistband. You want to make sure that the shorts are two inches shorter than the length of your skirt so they don't peek out from underneath. Using the same method as before, you'll want to find the midpoints of the waistband and midpoints of the shorts. And with the shorts tucked inside of the waistband, you'll want to sew with a zigzag stitch to attach everything together. One final try on of the skirt with the shorts, and I guess skort would probably be the right term for this at this point. A quick trim on the final length of the skirt was done off camera, and then this was the final result. Cute, simple, and functional, the skirt is perfect for summer. I even tested it out on the tennis courts and can confirm that you will look cute both on and off the court. Big shout out to my friend JP for helping me film these awesome tennis themed shots. I'll leave a link down in the description box below for his content, be sure to check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I think tennis skirts are definitely gonna stay around for a while and they just look super cute and super chic. Plus if it's a functional piece, you can work out in it. So I think it's a win-win. For a full tennis outfit, you'll definitely want a matching top. So if you're not already subscribed, I highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I post part two of the series, which shows you how to make a matching sports bra to go with your white tennis skirt. If you just wanna make a tennis skirt that isn't Nike branded or in a different color, feel free to do that. And please send me your photos because I would love to see your recreations of the skirt with the hashtag deconstruct so I can find all your lovely recreations. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know how I did and if you think you would rather DIY it or buy it. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I'm all up in the clouds when I'm pouring rain.